Um, yeah. So this was a song that came at a time when I left something that was very important to me without knowing where I was going. But I remember my boss said to me, he said, Maureen, where are you going to go from here? And I said, I don't know, but I know where I'm not staying. <laughs> and that was enough. That was all I needed to know. So uh, it's called Strong Cup of Coffee. Wake in the morning, strong cup of coffee. Get to the office and I pick up the phone. Rough conversations and it's harsh navigation. Sharp accusation, little cut to the bone. I put in some miles, spread up some smiles. I put out, I put up, I make good on my loan. But lately I feel low, I'll be chasing my shadow. I gotta give up and let go and find my way home. And find home. And find my way home. I fly over cities, man, it looks pretty. Tricked out and lit up like a queen on her throne. But lately I be low, I be chasing my shadow. I gotta give up and let go and find my way home. And find home, it's time to go home. I've been a rambler and a gambler, victim of slander, loved and lost and saved and spared and found. I got no game to play, seems I lost my way. I need to find my foot once more on friendly ground, cause I got a feeling it's time for a healing. My knees have been kneeling, I can't go it alone. Perfection's a no-show, gotta take off that halo, cause that's nobody I know. My facade has been blown. Yeah, I got a feeling that it's time for healing. My knees have been kneeling to find my way home. And perfection's a no-show, gotta take off that halo, cause it's nobody I know. I gotta find my way home. Still I gotta call in, even though I have fallen. I am not above crawling, to find my way home. Time home, it's time to go home. And find home, and find my way home. Wake in the morning, strong cup of coffee. Woo! Woo! That was incredible. You Thanks, never Beth. cease to amaze with your <laughs> plethora of creative talent. It is, you're, you're just incredible. Maureen. It's all God. It's all God. It's all good. <laughs> right back at you. You spot it. You got it. And thanks, Beth, for taking the lead today. <laughs> I said to Beth, hey, can you take the lead sometimes? Because she is an amazing leader. And she said to me, I'm not sure how, how you know, I'm not sure, like, how do you do it? I go, Beth, have you ever thrown a party before? She's like, yeah. I'm like, that's it. <laughs> That's all you're doing. So I love to break it down to the easiest aspect of the job because we're so much more capable than we give ourselves credit for. Mm -hmm. Well, you just do it so beautifully. So thank you. And that song, wow. I, it brought like tears to my eyes. I was like, oh, messing up my makeup here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was inspired to sing because of Martina being so brave to sing last week and dusting off her guitar. And you know, so we inspire each other to reach for the higher rung. Yeah. And that's what it's all about here. Yeah. So I just welcome everyone here to virtual speakeasy. I'm Beth Gordon. I'm a spiritual leader here. I'm also vice president of the board. 
co-facilitator of the maiden voyage and seven keys to the kingdom. And I am so blessed to be a part of this international community of extraordinary teachers. And you just saw one and heard one sing such beautiful music. And we are a place where you can take a class, you can teach a class. And Mari's gonna go over the highlights of all of our offerings a little bit later. But it's really great to be here with all of you in community this morning. And if this is your first time here, welcome. And if this is your second time here, welcome back. And we hope that you make this your spiritual home. We are a global community that honors the Divine Mother and follows A Course in Miracles. And we see each and every one of you as a unique expression of love, peace, creativity, and the embodiment of the divine. So Speakeasy is really an incubator of awesomeness. And we love making dreams come true. We love celebrating the very best of who you're capable of being. And it's a place to be known and to know about the limitless nature of God. That's some good stuff there. So we're a virtual community with a global message and we invite you to help us carry that message. So if you received a text message today to come to this, take a moment and just check in and see if there's anybody that you'd like to share this with and send them that text. And here's the thing, it doesn't matter if they show up. What matters is that you did your part in extending love. You see the universe, here's your invitation and your generosity and good returns to you. That's the mathematics of miracles. And the growth of your good, it's not restricted by what anyone else says or does whether they respond to your invitation or not. It's just about you. So as Maureen Muldoon often says, don't be stingy with the mustard. Don't be stingy with your invitations and your generosity. Just extend it. Whatever happens, happens. But in your own generosity, you are so blessed. So speaking of extensions of good, we have amazing teachers here uh, and offering. So there's a link in the, count, in the chat that has the calendar. So check that out. Today, Sherry Ransom is going to do our mission statement. Jeannie Laporte is going to do our prayer and meditation. And, she, and uh, these are ladies in our celebrant program. And then, of course, we have our own amazing Reverend Elizabeth Keats, who's going to be giving uh, an incredible talk. Uh, this is part of our mother series. Last week, we had Mia Sarah giving an amazing uh, talk that is the M of mother and today is the O of mother openness. And um, when she does her talk, have a pen and paper available to you. We wanna fully participate in what she's sharing uh, on the work by Byron Katie. Um, she's an incredible teacher. So you just really wanna fully be there. And the talk itself, is a conversation starter. The conversation is actually the most important part. See, we invite you to speak easily and find your voice, your truth, your thoughts, inspirations, awarenesses, whatever your questions are, bring it. Don't leave your brains and beliefs or your background at the door. We wanna be in the conversation. And although we may not have all the answers, we love the questions and the conversation. And just know that this community exists on the generosity that each and every one of the people here bring. And we'll have an opportunity for each of you to make a donation for today's daily bread so that we can pay the speakers and uh, we can keep the conversation going. And there will be links in the chat for both giving and our website. And we also invite you to use the chat if there's anything else you wanna add or say. And then Mari's going to share all the events and we'll have our conversation. And so um, I'm going to pass it to you, Sherry Ransom. For our Good morning. Thank you. Speakeasy's mission. Speakeasy is a diverse and progressive spiritual community sharing a message of love and engaging in conversations 
that inspire creative expression and spiritual well being. Truth is our passion, love is our religion, care is our currency, and peace is our goal. We attempt to speak easily about tough and tender topics so that we can navigate life with greater wisdom and grace. We devote this service to the Divine Mother, to Mary Magdalene, Jesus, Buddha, to all the names of God, to all saints and enlightened teachers and their teachings, specifically the teachings of A Course in Miracles. And I pass to Jean. And so I invite you right now to just take a moment and turn within and find that spark of light at the very center of your being, knowing that that light is God, it is your divine. And just watch it grow. Let it fill your whole beingness. Let it fill the room you're sitting in, the building you're in, the city you're in, the state, the province. Let that light fill the country you're in. Let that light of the divine fill the whole world, the universe and the multiverses. And let's just sit a moment in that light, in that divine, basking in its warmth, and asking spirit, what would you have me do? And so in this moment, in the quiet, we surrender and we recognize God. We recognize the divine knowing it is everywhere present. We call it love, we call it light. We call it love, divine mother, Buddha, angels and saints and sages and gurus. We know it is that one life, that one energy, that one love. And it dwells within me as it dwells within each and every one of you. In fact, all beings everywhere. I know that the consciousness that lives in the Christ dwells in each and every one of us. So how blessed is this day? How blessed we are to be together. How blessed is the world that we're together and that we share whatever we came to hear today. I know that we hear it with openness, with our open hearts and our open minds. I know that Reverend Elizabeth is that perfect teacher for the work of Byron Katie. I know that she is led by spirit. And I know that the voice of an angel comes through Maureen, not only through her songs, but through her laughter. And we can all just take a piece of that out into the world and we make the world a better place because we're participating in it. So I give thanks. I give thanks for every moment of this time together. I give thanks for every life that is here and beyond. And in gratitude, I simply say, thank you, God, how great thou art. And I release my word into that unconditional love, the law that said yes before the words were uttered and the light that shines through each and every one of us. I simply let it be. And together we say, and so it is. And I pass it back. So to you. we do have this amazing teacher with us today, Reverend Elizabeth Keats, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. Um, first of all, she is the mother of two amazing daughters. She is a retired English professor. She is a Course in Miracles minister through Pathways of Light. She is a writer, an extraordinary writer, actually. I've got to witness a lot of her writing, and it's always amazing how deep she'll go and how generous she'll be. 
she's a facilitator of A Course in Miracles through Miracles Live 365. She teaches both the lessons and the texts with us, and we're so blessed by that every single week. She's traveled to India many times to study with her own guru, and she's been a seeker since she was a young child. For years, she's been doing the Byron Katie work on herself, and during COVID, she began to help others use the work to find their way back home and back to peace. Uh, the impeccable alignment of A Course in Miracles and Katie's work is really exciting. We witness it all the time in our, in our lessons together, and so it's really great to have somebody who's literally holding space for both of these teachings. And when we're stuck... Um, finding forgiveness, uh, this work brings us to uh, the possibility. This work is practical, it's effective, and of course, it's miraculous. So that's the, the idea about the work. Now, the facilitator is a whole other story. She is the personification of generous. Like that's just one of the many strong cards that she holds. She is such a generous friend and teacher and member of our community. And uh, I know that you're going to receive something really amazing today. So I ask you in the theme of the, uh, the series to let go of everything that you think you know about Byron Katie or the work or forgiveness work or changing your mind, you know, and changing your life. And just open up your hearts to listen with your hearts and let yourself be led to where she's going to bring us today. And with that, please give a warm welcome to uh, Reverend Elizabeth Keats. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maureen. Whoa. All right. I, I love this concept of openness. So we're going to begin by opening a door. Join me as we climb the stairs of this halfway house for troubled women. We're going all the way to the attic. We take our key, we unlock the door and we open it. The woman inside is so frightening that they keep her locked up. In the corner on the floor, she's lying. So filled with self-loathing, rage and despair that she won't even get in the bed. She opens her eyes, sees a cockroach crawl across her foot and is instantly enlightened, although she would never use that word. Um, uh, yeah, she would not use the word enlightenment, but that's certainly what it sounds like to the rest of us. She loses all sense of ego, of self-identity, doesn't recognize her body, her husband, her children, Instantly, she is one with everyone and everything, and she lives in a constant state of unutterable bliss. She writes, there were no separate words for wall or ceiling or face or cockroach or foot or any of it. So it, she referred to herself as it for a while. So it was looking at its entire body looking at itself with no name. Nothing was separate from it, nothing was outside it. It was all pulsing with light and delight, one unbroken experience. To separate that wholeness, to see anything as outside itself wasn't true. And laughter kept pouring out of me. I saw that cockroach and foot are names for joy, that there are a thousand names for joy. It was like God giving itself life through the body of a woman. God so loving and bright, so vast, just a nameless recognition that consumed her. Love is the best word I can find for it. Eventually, she spends hours, days walking the desert near her home and develops a reputation as the lit lady. People show up at her home eager to be near her light. Slowly, she learns how to behave as if she were like us, a separate self. During this time, she says, the work came to me. Through inquiry, she recognized that all pain comes from thoughts and beliefs. Quote, I discovered that when I believed my thoughts, I suffered. 
but that when I didn't believe them, I didn't suffer, and that this is true for every human being. Freedom is as simple as that. I found that suffering is optional. I found a joy within me that has never disappeared, not for a single moment. And that was 1986. <laughs> in ACIM, in A Course in Miracles, we read, I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts. The work is a practical process to help us experience this. Unlike others who've experienced a moment of enlightenment or revelation, Katie has lived in that blissful state. Her life is devoted to sharing the work through books, workshops, and during COVID video sessions. All the material is free on her website, and Joni will put that up later. There's even an app for your phone so you can conveniently do the work wherever you are, whenever you're faced with a painful thought. The work is so simple, a child could do it easily. This is the way she puts it. Judge your neighbor, write it down, ask four questions, turn it around. Easy peasy. Whenever we're upset, the work offers release, freedom, joy, openness to truth. Katie tells us that loving what is, is the answer. If you fight what is, she says, you will lose, but only 100% of the time. She says, I love what I think and I'm never tempted to believe it. <laughs> Hold on that one for a minute. I love what I think and I'm never tempted to believe it. Thoughts are like the wind or the leaves, raindrops falling. They're not personal. They don't belong to us. They just come and go. When they're met with understanding, they're friends. The core practice of the work is the judge your neighbor worksheet, but that can take an hour or two to complete. And I am happy to do that process with anybody. But today I'm gonna to invite you to try her simpler one belief at a time process. So I'm assuming you've got your pen and paper. I really hope you'll all do this with us. Um, she often says that people who are familiar with the work will do it in their minds. And she says it never works the same because our minds are such tricksters. But if you put it all down on paper, it's gonna, it's really gonna be transformative. So here are the words we're gonna start with. By the way, in Byron Katie's work, we don't come as our spiritual evolved self. We come as our petty, small-minded, five-year-old spoiled brat selves. We bring our shadow to the work. So don't try to be holy and spiritual when you're doing the work, it never works. So when I say write the words down, I complain about blank because blank. Go ahead, write those words. I complain about blank because blank. And then take a person who comes to your mind. Could be somebody who irritates you, upsets you, disappoints you. Do not write about yourself. A lot of people go right to that. No, you're not allowed to do yourself uh, or a situation. Just take a person. It can be somebody who died years ago. It can be a neighbor who didn't say hello this morning. I complain about blank because. So I might write I complained about my mother because she never hugged me. Mm. Go ahead and add a couple of complaints. And when you're finished, uh, look up so I can get a sense of how much time we need. Don't write long, complicated sentences, just short, quick, abrupt, simple sentences. Okay, now, um, if you've written a couple of them, just look at one that you have the most energy about, and then cross out the words, 
I complain about and cross out the word because. So now you just have a statement like, my mother never hugged me. Anybody has a question, put your little hand emoji up or just unmute yourself. I can't see everybody at once, but I know I've got Joni there keeping an eye out, so. Okay, so now what I'd like is I'd like a couple of volunteers to just read your uh, statement as it's written, okay? And then we'll decide which one of you I'm gonna use as a guinea pig this morning. Uh, so if you, uh, you don't have to agree to do it, um, but if anybody will be willing to share what you wrote, just unmute yourself and put your hand up and I'd love to hear what you wrote. This is going to be a very short speakeasy. <laughs> okay, we've Amber, got Amber. Thank you. <laughs> and Mia. Amber, what do we have? Okay, so I put the neighbor Eric is passive aggressive and ignores us and acts like a child. He won't tell us why, and it annoys me that he'd rather be a shit than an adult. Okay, great. Thank you, Amber. Yeah. Um, Shoshana, what have you got? Um, I have. I complain about my sister because she needs me too much. Needs you too much. Great. Uh, Regina, how about you? Um, I complain about my neighbor because she complains about life and then doesn't show up for things that help her. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. And John, what do you have? I complain about Jacqueline, my bride, because she has dementia. Oh, okay. Um, wonderful. Okay, that was quite a list. Mia. Uh, okay, Mia, what have you got? Um, I complain about my mother's interfering. Great. Okay, so um, let's see. I'm trying to decide. Let's see what Holy Spirit suggests. I kind of like the last one. I think I like the mother, because especially since we're in this mother section right now at Speakeasy, um, how about, are you, are you up for it, Mia? It's, it's your choice. Yes. Okay. Chris. Wonderful. Okay. So now we're, we're all going to keep, uh, we're going to go to this second part and everybody please do it with Mia. Okay. We're not done writing yet. So now we get to the famous four questions. We did our little judge the neighbor, but now we want to do the four questions. So the first question we always ask is, is it true? So, Mia, read what you wrote. I complain about my mother's interfering. And opinion. Okay, yeah, remember we, we took out, I don't know whether you were, um, we took out the I complain because, so we just- Oh yeah, sorry. Stayed, yeah. My so mother- just, My mother interferes, I guess, is the- My mother, how about my mother is interfering? Is that good? My mother is interfering, yeah. Okay, so the first question, you write word number one down, and then you're either going to put a Y or an N. Is that true? Yes or no? No explanation, just a Y or an N. My mother is interfering. Is it true? Everybody got that? Now we're going to go to number two. I want you, whoever you have in your little piece, close your eyes. Picture that person in front of you right now. Picture the situation and ask yourself from your deepest self, are you absolutely sure that that's true? And when you get an answer, write either an N or a Y. Now we're gonna go to number three. And again, I just want you to write, you don't have to write a book, just simple, clear responses. How do you feel when you believe what you wrote? How does it feel to believe my mother is interfering or my mother never hugged me? How does that feel in your body, in your soul? How do you look at your mother? How do you talk to her? 
when you believe that thought. All right. Now I want you again to close your eyes and picture this person in your life. Find a situation where you're looking right at them and you have let go of that judgment completely. You're just looking at the person in full openness, open heartedness. Write down how that feels in your body and how it feels in your soul and how you treat them without the thought. Looks like we're ready. Mia, are you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. There, there's a request to repeat the question that you just um, put out. Great. There. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted you to take that incident with the person, look right at them, look in their eyes, see them in front of you, but let go of the thought you're having about them. That thought doesn't even exist. It's not real. You've let it go. So you're just looking at that person in that in this moment in freedom. Is that clearer? Okay, now we get to the juicy stuff. <laughs> Are you seatbelted belted in, Mia? No. <laughs> okay, so um, so read your statement again, Mia. My mother interferes. Is it true? Yes, was my first answer. Okay, yes, thank you. And then when you really, really think about it, are you absolutely sure it's true that your mother interferes? What did you write for number two? N. No. Hmm? No. No. Answer. Okay, great. Um, and then you can either read what you wrote or answer right now. In fact, I'd prefer we do it spontaneously now if you don't mind. So, mm -hmm. so close your eyes and picture your mother in that moment when you see her as interfering in your life. Could you tell us what the incident is, what incident comes to mind when you imagine her interfering? It can be a memory of something that happened recently. Okay, uh, telling her what she think my, thinks my children ought to do. Okay, and you're looking at her. Where are you? In the kitchen, on the in phone? The What's... Mm -hmm. In the kitchen. In the kitchen. And um, she's telling you what your children should do. You're looking at her right now. Are you sitting at the table? Where are you? Sitting at the table. She's okay, so you're looking. Sitting. Okay. And how do you feel in your body in this moment? Agitated, uncomfortable. Hmm. Go within, is there any place in your body where you experience that? My chest. What's happening in your chest? Just a sort of a, a tightness. Um, yeah. And how do you talk to your mother? How do you treat your mother in this With situation? Impatience. Hmm? Impatient? Yeah. yeah. What else comes up? How do you look um, at him? 
I probably don't. You look all over the room except in your mother's eyes. Mm. That accurate? Yes. Yeah. Again, any new feelings coming up? Anything it reminds you of? Mm. My husband's coming into my mind, but... Yeah. There's a little bit of openness coming in as well. But the words fuck off are there. <laughs> fuck off and mind your own business. There's a girl who doesn't feel like she has to be spiritual every second. Yes, fuck off. Okay, beautiful. You did that great. <laughs> Mia was the one who gave the sermon last week, everybody. It was so beautiful. <laughs> Um, so now I want you to go back and sit at that kitchen table and your mom is sitting there with you and you're chatting together and you have let go of the judgment that she is interfering. You're just looking at her now without any thoughts about what she should be doing and shouldn't be doing and what she is doing. Those are all gone. You're simply looking at your mom in this moment. Take a minute to feel that way. And when you're, when you're centered in it, tell us how you're feeling in your body. Lighter. How do you see your mom in this moment? She's actually, she's laughing and trying to stop herself from laughing. There's a thing she does, you know, where she doesn't sort of let fully into the laugh, but she's, she's laughing and her eyes are tearing up. Um, yeah. She's How do you saying, feel about her as you really see her laughing and tearing up with laughter and joy? How are you feeling? about her that i love her mm. yeah beautiful anything else coming up um it's the awareness um of how much she cares about me yeah. and my children. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Mm. All right. Beautiful work, Mia. Beautiful. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is the turnarounds, where we take the statement and we look at the opposite. Now, we don't do it with the idea that the opposite is the true one. We do it with the idea... <clears throat> You may have heard this before in A Course in Miracles, that perception is projection. <laughs> so the first thing we want to do, well, the first one is an easy one. Why don't we do the opposite? Mia, state the opposite. My mother is not interfering. Can you come up with examples where your mother, in fact, wasn't interfering in your life or your children's life? Have any examples of that? Um, my, my youngest daughter um, yeah started making choices that we thought she might have uh, be challenged by and she she didn't interfere in any way or didn't have anything to say wonderful can you come up with another one um, can be way in the past it can be recent just times where she wasn't interfering at all. Um, when I remarried, <laughs> yes, tell us more. <laughs> I'm 
laughing because there was I had two you know I had to, I had to do registry office and another wedding in Ibiza and she did say I was putting people to a lot of expense <laughs> sorry that just came into my mind <laughs> you know I never feel like we've fully done the work unless the person doing it bursts out in laughter at least once or twice right all of you a number <laughs> of you I'm looking at on the screen have done the work with me and there's always that point where you just start laughing you um, <laughs> thank you Mia um <laughs> Then I also want you to consider, I am in, I interfere in my mother's life. Mm. Can you come up with any times or examples where you interfered with your mother in your mother's life? Well, I guess I disrupted her life many times over the years. I don't know in, if if we can use interfere and disrupt in the same. Yeah, I, I think we can, but I, I think also you might want to consider, you could tell us about the disrupting, but then I'd also like you to stay with interfering because they don't mean exactly the same thing and yeah. it's your word. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to think where, where I would interfere. I can give you one. Okay. Your mother sitting at the table talking about your children and you in your mind are interfering with those thoughts of hers saying you shouldn't be talking about my children they're mine mm -hmm. okay yeah yeah oh, well then there's manny <laughs> <laughs> in that case yeah sometimes um sometimes we say it that way my thoughts about my mother are interfering try yeah. that one on my thoughts about my mother are interfering and i certainly stop listening i tune you know i i come to a place where it's you know, so I interfere her process, I guess, because I'm I'm not present anymore. Oh, what's a better interference than that? You put a wall yeah. up and don't hear anymore. That's that's yeah. the perfect interference. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Got it. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, I interfere with myself. Let's try it in terms of Holy Spirit. I, I love being able to share the Holy, the, the Course in Miracles concepts on this call. That's partly why I love doing Byron Katie's work because A Course in Miracles aligns absolutely impeccably. So, so take it that way. Do I interfere with Holy Spirit's voice? Oh, for sure. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think it's ladies and gentlemen. No, there might be two or three. Yeah, that's it. That's that's the course. Um, so um, we have time if I don't know whether. Um, Thank why you. Why don't I just take any. How do you feel, Mia? Yeah, good, light, clear. Yeah, um, it's very refreshing. Great. Thank you so yeah. much for offering to do that. Does yeah. anybody have any comments or anybody want to share? I know normally, Maureen, we talk at the end. So I don't yes. know if you wait till the end to do this. Um, I think it would be I think it would be helpful if we stuck to the format so that we could um, stay on course with the Great. timing. Um, so. Uh, at this point, we're going to pass it to Mari to give us, um, first of all, thank you so much for demonstrating that in such a graceful manner. And thank you, Mia, for uh, offering up your uh, backstory. And uh, yeah, I have some questions for sure. I hope, I'm sure you have some questions for sure. And uh, so I hope you do uh, stick around and uh, join the conversation. But first, we're going to hear from Mari. And uh, she's going to give us a little uh, invitations on other offerings that we have here at Speakeasy. I'm going to pass it to you, Mari. Yes, good morning and actually good day because I know some of our friends are uh, away. So we would like, first of all, to thank Reverend Elizabeth for such a wonderful process uh, that we can take with us everywhere we go for sure. Um, we would also like to thank everyone who supports our non-for-profit virtual community uh, financially and through your prayers. Uh, your financial gifts allows us to offer free classes and events uh, to expand your spiritual journey throughout the week. You will see a donation link in the chat 
uh, that Joni has set up for us. And we invite you to check in with your inner guide uh, to see what is yours to share with us. Uh, no gift is too small. Some of the classes and events that we have coming up um, are next, uh, actually today, starting today at 1 p.m. Uh, Central Time. We have the community visioning. Next Saturday, we have at 10 a.m. Central, we have introducing the work of Byron Katie with Reverend Elizabeth. So if you want to do this work, um, just in a smaller group and really have it walk uh, her walk with you. So you can join that group. It'll be fantastic. That is next Saturday. Uh, next Saturday as well at 1 p.m. We have a havening technique, uh, technique with Mia Sarah. And coming up in December, yes, the holidays are coming. Um, we have Christmas carols. So if you enjoy singing Christmas carol, um, join us. That is going to be an in-person event. Um, so if you're in the Illinois area, join us for that. And also in December, if you have any friends that speak Spanish, we're going to start uh, the Spanish A Course in Miracles. Um, throughout the week, we have a full calendar. We have A Course in Miracles, 12 Steps Program, Sacred Sanctuary, Go to our website, speakeasyspiritualcommunity.com. We have our calendar is there. It will have exact dates and time zones for you and everything can be found there. And I pass it back to you. Mute please, sweet. Thanks, Mari. I was just putting some of the forms up because I want to make sure that if you have questions about the work that you can click on that form, tell us every question that you have, and then uh, Reverend Elizabeth can help um, to create that offering. It's going to be super exciting. Um, before we go into the conversation, which is where you get to put up your virtual hand and um, it, and get into a conversation with Reverend Elizabeth. I just want to say that today, the visioning, if you have an idea, a concept, a dream, a desire that you want to know the next right steps around, that would be a great place for you to bring it. And we do a four-step process that was given to us by Reverend um, Beckwith from Agape. And it is uh, just a way to sort of help to um, nurture that idea and to uh, collaborate with uh, the Holy Spirit. So. Um, you can come to just check it out or you can come to participate, but that's what the visioning process is all about. We do it once a month. And if you have any other questions about anything that goes on, because some of this stuff is probably new to some people, um, be sure to reach out to us and we will help you navigate it. So um, we're going to bring back Elizabeth Keats and uh, put your hand up if you have a question. Even if you don't have a question, I'd love to hear anybody who would like to share how this experience was for them this morning. I do have a question. I have a situation with somebody in my life who will remain nameless, who is an overdrinker. And I'm a member of 12 Step. So when I was doing the turnaround, I overdrink. Um, it didn't feel like it was true for me. And so I wanted to know what what I was missing there. I don't want to opt out of a healing here. There were places when I got to the point where I got to see this person in their truth. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. Like they're incredible. And when I saw them in my broken perspective, I felt angry. I felt frustrated. I felt disgusted. When I saw them in their holy version, I felt inspired, impressed, admirable, and appreciative. They're like two ends of the, of the seesaw. So, uh, but I couldn't get the turnaround. Now, I could get the turnaround with an old version of myself where I used to overdrink. Um, but I just, that was my question. A great question. And sometimes you can't be literal word for word. So you can go to, is there anything... I'm going to be real amazed if you give me a yes to, is there anything Maureen Muldoon overdoes? <laughs> <laughs> so okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to be literal drinking. Yeah. It can be anything that, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Any, anything th that makes me check out and not be present. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> Great question. Um, John, is that a new hand up or an old hand up? <laughs> a new one. 
Uh, one of the questions I had is there, was there a second turnaround thing? Um, you know, often she likes there to be three, but sometimes you can always come up with three. I had to stretch a little bit with Mia to come up with the third, but what it usually is, is the opposite and then apply it to yourself and then apply it to the other. Those are the three. Okay, I'm a little confused because with mine, with my bride having dementia, both, yeah. my, both of the first two questions, the answer was yes. <laughs> it's absolutely true. She has yeah. dementia. And then how do I feel about it? it? It makes me sad and sometimes frustrated. And I feel alone because I can't talk to her really. And then, but then when I, the second one, how do I feel about that thought without that thought? is when I pictured her in our relationship before she had dementia, it filled me with great joy and happiness and love and all of this. So I was wondering, I, I guess the turnaround, I said that I judged Jacqueline, so with her dementia. And so I tried not to judge her with that, which I try to do, <laughs> but I'm just wondering how I turn that around. I, I think there could be a turnaround of my thoughts about my wife, are demented. <laughs> that <laughs> is, sorry, I'm really outrageous. You might as well know. Yes. But you know, there's a way uh, my mother in law had dementia and my grandmother as well. There's a way we make the person be the thing and we forget all the other. You know, there's this, this woman in your life that you love and she's so much more than her illness, right? So you can you can work the the opposite that way. Right? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I like that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for letting me share this with you today. Thank you so much. It's so so great. It's so helpful. And again, if you're interested in going deeper, there is a link in the chat that you can um, find out more about this conversation. Um, Additionally, you can go over to the website and you can find out about our small groups, our salons, our 12-step Course in Miracles meetings, um, our free yoga in the morning. I mean, it's all so much, so much is there. I know Mario already mentioned it, but um, like, again, like don't be stingy with the mustard and also like, don't like let yourself not enjoy some mustard. <laughs> we have a lot of good mustard here. So um, I'm gonna close with a, a song that is actually uh, two songs. And, and, and the reason that I was inspired to sing these two songs is that um, one is a song that I would teach the kids when I ran the youth program. It's a Karen Drucker song um, about who you are. And then one is from A Course in Miracles and it's about who I am. And so I didn't practice this, we'll see what happens. And, um, and here goes. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. I am God's son, complete and healed and holy, and shining in reflection of his love. In me is his creation sanctified and guaranteed eternal life in me is love perfected and fear impossible and joy established Without opposite, I am the holy home of God. Herself. 
Amen. God bless and have a beautiful day. Thank you, everyone. Love it. Best ever. Beautiful. Best ever. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you, Maureen. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless. Love you all. Bye. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.